dear students as part of the paper on mortality we need to understand what are the factors contributed for the decline in mortality in the past in the developed countries this module is intended for these and uh, through this we will learn about factors which are affect which have affected high mortality in developed countries in the past factors like famines and food shortage epidemic diseases concur recurrent wars poor sanitary conditions and some of these factors have affected high mortality at the same time we also should know what are the causes that led to the decline in mortality in these countries for instance factors like economic development sanitary reforms public health measures social reforms advances in medicine and medical technology they are all very important contributory factors for the decline in mortality in these societies if you look at in the earlier 19th century and late 18th century death rates all over the world were very high and they were fluctuating the main reasons for such high mortality rates were acute and chronic food shortages causing famines and conditions of malnutrition epidemics recurrent wars and poor sanitary conditions when we look at famines and food shortages in the pre industrial phase man had limited control over his environment and food supply was profoundly affected by changes in weather conditions such as droughts floods severe winter and scorching summers agriculture development and production was very low which is leading to food shortages and other conditions such as inefficiency of labor pests and by diseases this all led to the production from agriculture sector was very low in addition to that the available registration of death rate records also showed that there are high percentage of deaths due to starvation it is more likely that hunger by weakening the body increased its susceptibility to diseases rather than killing overright many diseases were attacked and killed those weakened with weakened constituents such as plague and smallpox these are all which contributed for high mortality in the year 1690 and onwards poor harvests have resulted during that period in serious food shortages throughout most of europe and failures in crop continued to be up to 1740 to 41 and up to 1770s leading to increases in the levels of mortality as brought out by thompson lewis in 1965 the food shortage remains up to 1840s and one third of the population of the united kingdom and ireland subsisted on potato salon and bread as brought out in the writings by stern in 1941 there are several epidemic diseases which also have contributed for instance from the beginning mankind has suffered from various communicable diseases such as typhoid smallpox dysentery malaria pneumonia tuberculosis typhus fellow fever plague etc as well as infants and children's diseases such as enteritis measles whooping cough scarlet fever and diphtheria these epidemic diseases have immensely contributed for high mortality they are they were quite common for a long time and took a heavy toll of life these diseases tended to spread rapidly in densely populated areas through personal contacts community use of contaminated water and food supply and as a result of the migration of persons and disease carrying insects from one population center to another as revealed by 
Habakkuk in 1965 from his writings. Till 150 to 200 years ago, scientific knowledge regarding diseases was so meager that even when methods of prevention or cure were attempted, they were not able to understand the outbreak of a particular epidemic which took place and the reasons for its spread. Very little knowledge was available about the use of drugs such as salvarsan, insulin, the sulfonamides and the antibiotics as brought out by Helenair in his writing in 1945. The Black Death of period 1348 to 1350 in Europe was worst epidemic which has killed 25 to 30 million, 35 million persons and Italy is reported to have lost one half of its population and France and England one third of its population as revealed in the ratings of uh, Thompson and Lewis in 1965. Further, cyclical outbreak of smallpox which claimed a large number of deaths before introduction of vaccine in Europe during 1880 was also listed as one of the factors contributed for high mortality. Another component which we need to understand which has contributed for high mortality was recurrent wars. War which is a contribution of political conflicts either directly or indirectly affects mortality of the country and the world at large. Death among military personnel may occur on the battlefield later on as a result of wounds received during combat or from war associated deprivation and disease all contributed for mortality which is at high level. Some wars indirectly caused heavy civilian casualties through the spread of diseases carried by armies. During Second World War, civilians became the target of direct attack and there were tremendous losses through massive aerial bombing by Nazis of Jews and certain other ethnic groups. During Second World War, it is estimated by Frumkin in 1951 writings in his study that Europe and the Soviet Union may have sustained losses of around 30 to 35 million people and be, who might have been died. The following table 1 gives the estimated deaths of European military personnel during the period 1600 to 1918 due to the war. The loss due to war and loss of life suffered during 20th century underlines the fact that war as a factor was least subject to control than famine epidemics. Due to war, rise in death rate became inevitable. Nuclear war in terms of human loss brings continuous loss to human beings for generations. As table 1 depicts the estimated deaths of European military personnel during 1600 to 1918 clearly reveals that the number of deaths were in millions. For instance, in 1600 to 1699, 3.3 million deaths among military personnel and the annual military death rate per thousand population was worked out to be 0 0.3. In, during the period 1700 to 1788, the number of military deaths rose to 3.9, which was again 0.9 as the death rate per thousand population. During the period 1789 to 1815, it further rose to to the extent of 5 millions among military deaths and the percentage was almost 1% as the death rate. In 1816 to 1913, the number of military deaths has been reported to be 2.2 millions which constitutes 0.1 annual military death rate and during the period 1914 to 1918, the number of military deaths is as high as 9.1 millions which constitutes 5.3 death rate among the military per year. This has brought out in the source United Nations 1973 in the Determinants and Consequences of Population Trends, Volume 1 on Population Studies, which was published in 1973. The other important factor which we need to understand is that Poor sanitary conditions also contributed for high mortality. 
in the 18th century in most of the urban areas mortality was higher than rural areas because of housing and sanitation conditions are very very poor urban areas are largely with industries in the industrial cities and towns often there is no provision of sufficient water and waste were dumped into rivers destroying the aquatic life and polluting the water they are all contributed for poor sanitary conditions inside factories there was little ventilation temperature were much too hot in summer and too cold in winter with no adequate lighting with long hours of work people are at risk of accidents in the industrial localities in european countries the residential areas are more noxious or noisy and the family occupied with small area with no sanitation facilities or common features the concept of personal cleanliness was practically unknown given this situation all individually or collectively have contributed and influenced for high mortality in most of these developed countries and this was situation in all the developed countries during that period then thanks to industrialization urbanization modernization the various factors have contributed for the decline in mortality and it is very interesting analysis for us to understand the various causes that contributed for such a decline after facing high mortality situation in developed countries like europe america and oceania during 19th century mortality started decline which is mainly due to advancement in socio economic development the causes are listed like economic development and raising income levels sanitary reforms and public health measures social reforms and advances in medicine and medical technology they all have contributed for reduction in mortality let us take each of these factors and discuss how they have contributed for reduction in mortality for example when we talk about economic development and raising income levels it was noticed that in europe north america and oceania there was a continuous economic progress resulting from agriculture and industrial revolutions which has been the main reason for the reduction in mortality rates that first began to decline rather weakly in the 17th century and then with an increasing tempo throughout the 18th and 19th century the mortality reduction was very very visible and it is a, at a steep level with the agriculture revolution which began in england around 1700s and spread throughout europe and european settlements abroad the productivity of land and labor began to increase the risk of crop failures was reduced and the supply of food became fairly steady with the increase in quantity and quality of food mortality rates in europe and european overseas settlements came down drastically the other aspect which contributed which we need to understand is the sanitary reforms and public health measures an important factor which contributed to the reduction in mortality was improvements in sanitary conditions and public health measures sanitary reforms were introduced in england in the 19th century following the sanitary reform movement which was started to combat the many evils of the industrial revolution the government and private agencies with the public health is an outgrowth of the sanitary reform movement which began in 19th century in england as a reaction to the many evils arising from the industrial revolution parallelly we also should understand the various contributory factors in form of social reforms social reforms in the 19th and 20th centuries lessened the hazards of working in the factory early in life in british a series of factory acts beginning as early as 1802 was introduced legislation bearing on the number of working hours and minimum wages was enacted and working conditions improved because of the various safety devices that were introduced these reforms in industrial labor acts have made a immense uh, efficient way of uh, not only to see that the working conditions of the workers have improved at the same time lot of welfare measures are also 
have been presented during that period. Among the important achievements were housing leg legislation enacted in Great Britain were the Safesbury Act of 1851, which provides statutory authorities to condemn unfit houses and to impose occupancy standards in the interests of public health. In France, for example, at the same period, a country has passed an act which provides improvement in the insanitation houses. The other aspect which we need to understand is the advances in medicines and medical technology. At the end of the 18th century, in 1798, Edward Jenner published his famous essay presenting evidence that inoculation for cowpox prevents smallpox. Vaccine developed for smallpox helped eradication of the smallpox and in this regard, Louis Pasteur's research work on microorganisms helped the sterilization of food, especially milk and its milk product. In the late 19th century, the development of asepsis, that is precautionary exclusion of pathogenic microorganisms and antisepsis, which is killing or inhibiting the growth of microorganisms that are already present have helped in the reduction of mortality. Aseptic and antiseptic surgery was introduced and the germ theory was accepted in various other aspects of life such as preservation of uh, food through pasteurization and sterilization. The development of immunology was yet another cause of the declines in mortality. Immunization against smallpox was introduced first, which was followed by the development of vaccines for chickenpox, cholera, sheep anthrax, hydrophobia and diphtheria. Prophylactic antitoxins were also introduced against diseases like tetanus, typhoid, yellow fever, scarlet fever, poliomyelitis, influenza, measles, whooping cough. Some of the advances in chemotherapy used for drugs to cure or inhibit the progress of diseases began in the late 1930s. Sulfonamides and penicillin in the treatment of respiratory and urine tract infections came to be widely used in the control and cure of various kinds of diseases. As a consequence of the use of this broad spectrum of antibiotics, mortality from communicable diseases declined substantially. The factors which all contributed is of very interesting because if we look at the advancement in medical technology, improvement in service uh, sanitation conditions, they all have individually and collectively have contributed because in the pre-industrial period, the mortality rates are very high irrespective of the level of development in those areas because in the pre-industrial phase there are several traditional methods adopted and also because of poor sanitation conditions the lot of uh, epidemics and communicable diseases were regular feature and all have contributed in high mortality especially among children, mothers and those who are vulnerable and susceptible for various diseases. And parallelly, when there are medical reforms and also there are several technology which has adopted in medical aspects have immensely contributed for immunization and other forms of improvement in the technology which have contributed for reduction in mortality. Thus, we need to understand that most of the developed countries, though they are in the initial stages prior to industrialization, they were all with experiencing very high mortality. However, given the socio-economic development, given the improvement in sanitary and other facilities, especially at the community level and advancement of medical technology, all have led to improvement in mortality situation and improvement in public health measures, they all contributed in reduction in the mortality. Other important factor which we need to understand is 
the improvement in the quality of life, the standard of living and the awareness that has created in personal hygiene and also they have contributed for at individual level, at a household level, at a community level, greater awareness in taking care of the health measures and the improvement in sanitary conditions. They all have shown a tremendous influence in controlling various uh, communicable diseases and in that way the mortality has come down tremendously. The other aspect we need to understand is that when standard of living has increased, the purchasing power of the families have improved. So thanks to proper housing facilities, thanks to their purchasing of uh, sanitation and other facilities which have immensely contributed besides their own awareness and personal hygiene measures that have been adopted by the individual members of the society and family at large has contributed in controlling various diseases and also the com communicable diseases are under control. And this has tremendously improved the healthy behaviors and also by adopting with the greater health education measures, the people in the communities, they have, have a, had a fair understanding about the measures that are required at their level so that the healthy life leading makes a lot of difference in their way of life and the women's empowerment have also contributed for the family, not only for the mothers in general but also for children and other members in the family have tremendously benefited in having a healthy life so that there is an assurance for living and also for a higher life expectancy started emerging thanks to industrialization, modernization and urbanization. As we all observed that most of the developed countries thanks to industrialization, urbanization has increased and urban as a way of life brings an organized way of life for people and also given the high purchasing power, high economic development will also lead to for understanding in a big way and also making a lot of effort in maintaining cleanliness not only in the household but also in the community and neighborhoods and society in general responded in maintaining cleanliness and also observing healthy lifestyles and following and adopting various advances in medical technology through immunizations, vaccinations and with various curative measures. So in this way both preventive and curative measures have greatly helped along with general socio-economic development that has taken place in the industrial countries have led to a drastic reduction in the mortality. So that way the mortality which was uh, more than 25 to 30 crude death rates per thousand population has come down to a single digit of 5 to 7 and furthermore 3 to 5 like that in most of the highly developed countries. That's why as we noticed that uh, given the industrialization, most of these countries besides improving their quality of life, especially in economic development, also have contributed in the higher transition in the health, where the health transition took place for, through which the mortality reduction has come because of healthy measures that have been adopted both by the government and also by the community and individuals at large so that the mortality has responded for the higher industrialization in the society. In that way, the people in general started responding to have healthy measures and 
brought out the mortality at large to a greater level. So, in that summary, I conclude by stating that in this module, we are able to understand what are the various factors that have contributed for high mortality situation in the past in developed countries like uh, epidemics, wars, poor sanitary conditions, low socio-economic development and all these factors how they have been minimized and with advancement in medicines and medical technology, higher sanitation measures and high socio-economic development and adopting personal hygiene by the people themselves which all have immensely contributed for greater reduction in mortality levels and in that way we are seeing that most of the developed countries have made a tremendous effort in reducing their mortality levels, experiencing very high levels of uh, life expectancies and a greater assurance of living for the individuals in their societies, which is a very important factor which have to be kept in mind in most of the developing countries. No doubt, thanks to importing medical technology from developed countries, the developing countries also started showing its uh, response in reducing the mortality levels. However, infants, infant mortality rate, maternal mortality rate in most of the developing countries still at higher levels. That is why we are experiencing a high mortality in developing countries, whereas a greater reduction in mortality in developed countries is highly noticed.